by the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. It's nice to see you all this morning. I know it's cold out. Hope it's comfortable in here for you, though. This reading from St. Luke is very dear to a Franciscan men and women. When Francis of Assisi, many centuries ago, was trying to decide what he wanted to do because he was very young, 20, 21 years old, and he just had some kind of a spiritual experience. Christ spoke to him from the cross. And there's a whole story to that I won't get into, but it, it jolted him, as it would any of us, I would imagine, because it called him to come and follow him, to take up his cross and follow him, and to build up the church because it's falling down. And there's, again, a story about that. But you have to consider that Francis wasn't terribly outgoing. You know, he didn't have a real open personality in his younger years. Whenever he uh, was with his friends, of course, it was another story. You know, sometimes when we're with our families, we're one way. And sometimes when we're with our friends, we're another way. When I was growing up, the nuns and priests used to tell us that we should wear the same, they called it a mask, be the same person all the time and be the person that you would be if you were speaking to our Lord, or you were in the presence of someone who was notable, like the President of the United States or the Bishop of the Diocese, that you shouldn't be two-faced and be a person who tells the truth, watch your language, use the same kind of language that you would use with your parents, or again, if you were speaking to the Lord in your prayer, that you would have also whenever you were with your friends. The whole idea is to be mature, to have integrity, which means to tell the truth, and to be your best self. And so Francis of Assisi was used to being raised with a pretty prosperous household. His parents had a lot of money, and he was used to the finer things. But one of the things that happened that he felt Christ was calling him was to leave the comfortableness and uh, to live day to day very, very simply. And the kind of joy that he had in speaking to the Lord from the cross, he wanted that joy to belong to others. So with that, he had to be joyful instead of sad or, or um, you know, have your attention drift or, you know, be lost like we are in these days with all this stuff. He was someone who... Uh, was thoughtful, but not real outgoing. But boy, did that change. You see, always remember, boys and girls, the Lord gives you the grace. If you want to do something that is good, the Lord will give you the grace to do it. We were taught that whenever we first entered the community and people were frightened of oh, going on to college or people were frightened of someday preaching or people were frightened of someday getting up and having to read even the first reading like our lectors beautifully did this morning. They were shy and they were kind of paralyzed with fear. It's common. Uh, we're not all born with that. Most of us have to do it through repetition again and again and again. And you come to a comfort zone of some sort. But uh, Francis was wondering, should I just stay somewhere like in a cave or in a small home and pray all the time for the church? Or should I go out and preach the gospel? And so he did something that we know to do in our Catholic faith. If you want to do something and you're not sure of the reaction, he asked a couple of people, would you pray for me? Would you pray that I may know what God wants for me so I may know his direction? Because I can't quite put my finger on it. So it's customary then and it's customary now that he asked St. Clair, whose statue was up here, he said, would you please pray for me? And she knew what to do. She would go into her chapel, and she would go into her room in her home, and she would pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to her. And she would open up the scriptures, and she began to read. Holy Spirit, please speak to me through the word of God. 
and she would open it up and she would begin to read. And it's our custom, after the model of the Trinity, to do that maybe three times, over a period of time, three times at a sitting, and see what the Holy Spirit says to you. He also asked a good friend of him, his name was Maceo, Brother Maceo, to do the same. So he did the same thing. And so whenever they all got, and Francis was praying, and when they all got together, they all came up with Matthew and Luke that said the same thing, parallel gospels, different, written at different years by different people, but it was the same story or message. And this first, uh, or this gospel reading that we had today is the one that was most common. And that is to take up your cross and follow him. Don't take any money bag or sack or sandals. The whole piece to this household when you go in, stay in the house and eat what they put in front of you. Don't complain about it and say, I don't eat that. Be humble and eat what they put in front of you. And also pray for the sick when you're there. And it was all the instructions there. And so Francis obviously got the message. Number one, that he was to do this, live simply and not be a hermit, but be a preacher. And number two, that he was to rely on the grace of God who would give them the courage. And that's something that we all have to pray for, courage. Courage means brave love. And whenever I really love someone or I love something that I would like to do, that's the courage that God gives me to step out in spite of the fact I'm scared to death and I'm really trembling and I'm going to step out there and pray to God that he'll give me the grace to do that. And so when we come into Timothy and Titus, what I want you to leave you with is that Timothy was known for his timidness. He was very shy and he was living in Corinth, and Corinth was a robust town where there's a lot of things going on, a lot of activity, much of it very sinful. And he was too backward to confront the people about what they were doing that wasn't right, that was a sin. And Paul had to write him a couple of letters, encourage him and also correcting him. He was very pastoral, very fatherly to him. And eventually, Timothy got up the gumption he got the guts to go out and speak as he should. He was scared to death because it wasn't his native personality, but he felt the grace of God. Grace means strength. And so sure enough, he made some headway and Corinth began to change. It wasn't as bad as it was. and Many conversions came about because of Timothy. Later on, he was sent somewhere else and he's considered a martyr. Uh, they, he was murdered for preaching against some pagans who were having some kind of a feast that worshiped the earth. Of course, we don't worship the earth. We worship the Lord who created heaven and earth. And they didn't like that. And so they beat him up and they killed him. And it was the same thing with Titus, although Titus was very fiery. And he went to Corinth and boy, they straightened up because he didn't put up with nonsense and he would go in there and he would tell it like it was he was very courageous and bold he had what you call the prophetic voice which is to say it tell it like it is and again he was transferred somewhere that had never heard about Jesus Christ and he too was killed but they're great saints because they were very courageous and they're models for us that we would be really willing to risk anything for our Lord. You know, many people give their lives for the church. They're called martyrs. It's interesting. Sometimes I think with what's going on in our country sometime, I wonder if we're going to end up being martyrs because we're Catholics and we're Christians and we go against things like abortion, the political people in charge now are saying is okay when it isn't okay and it hurts the Lord and it must anger the Lord with so many children that are not with us because of that sin. But we have to be courageous and speak up and whenever you're older, vote appropriately for virtue and what the church teaches. So the message today is with Titus and Timothy is, I ask myself, of course, you're too young so I'll speak to the big boys and girls. Would I 
be willing to give my life for Jesus Christ? Would I be willing to suffer and die, even at the hands of others, even at politicians, God forbid, someday, who say that we shouldn't be Catholic and we shouldn't be Christian, or else you're going to be punished? Would I be willing to be punished and suffer for that? Or would I be timid and say, okay, you win, and I'd go about and I wouldn't preach and live the gospel. That's wasted grace. It's called cheap grace. I don't use it. But God gives us the grace to go after what he wants for us that he puts in our heart. And that's virtue and goodness. So we pray today for the universal church, for Christians everywhere who stand for the gospel, who are missionaries for the gospel, who are being taught the gospel, who are teaching the gospel, and those who are called to preserve the gospel, which is all of us, besides the bishops and the cardinals and the pope and priests and religious, all of us are called to guard and to live the gospel and to live it truly. And as St. Paul says here, don't worry about it, you'll be given the grace. And we know that from Timothy and Titus. They had the courage to preach and they weren't scared at all whenever they preached because God had given them a grace. And in their suffering, we know that they went right to heaven because God rewarded them for speaking the truth. Just as the Father raised up Jesus Christ from his passion and death and gave him resurrection life, he resuscitates and resurrects us too. He raises us up always, especially in this life many times when we're supposed to live the gospel. And we pray that we'll be able, like Timothy and Titus, to inspire others to be good live with virtue, and love Jesus Christ, which is the purpose of your education. Let's stand.